How's it gaming? I'm filling the blanks and welcome back to Let's Play Pikmin 2. Let's head back into the Valley of Repose, the only place we can go really, for our first real day, day two. Um, and there's two major differences with day two onwards, and the first off is there are enemies and we can lose our Pikmin. Uh, the second one is that we have an actual in-game timer to represent the time of day. One in-game day, I believe, represents 13 real-world minutes, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, it doesn't really matter as much as it did in Pikmin 1, and you'll see why in a few minutes. So, good morning, workers. Ready for another day of toiling for the profit of your company? Ooh, <laughs> this game brings down my soul sometimes. The Pikmin seem to still be asleep inside their onion. What lazy creatures. No wonder they lack survival skills and then stamina the onion, you can get them. Obviously, we only have one type of Pikmin, that is the red Pikmin. If you've played the other Pikmin games, uh, or at least the first one, you watch me play it, then you know that there are also yellow Pikmin and blue Pikmin. This game also introduces two new colors of Pikmin, but we will see them in a little bit. Let's get some more Pikmin while we go around. Uh, in this version of the game, oh, there's still nothing up here. Uh, Pikmin will grab and carry the thing that they destroy, like the little pellet posies. They'll um, take over uh, the thing that they, like, break. You know what I mean? So, like, when they bust down this flower through five of them, because there's like five of Pikmin. Actually, I don't know how many throw it through six. <laughs> Does it really matter? There we go. And they'll all just, they, I don't have to tell them to also bring over the thing, so they'll do that stuff themselves. Let's get some Pikmin up here. We need 35 up here. We'll have more than 35 once these uh, kind of get back to the onion. Now, the color of the little pellets uh, will kind of influence how many Pikmin you'll get from them. They are red here on purpose, so I'll get a little bit more. Um, so this this five, I think, will give me like two more. I think the, the, the one pellet will give me two in total. Let's see. Pop and pop. And floop, floop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so the the one pellets will give me two, the five pellets will give me seven. So that's kind of a quick way to just get some Pikmin. We do want a good size army of, of all colors. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Are you gonna... You look like you're about to sprout up there, but that's okay. We don't need that right now. We have 36 Pikmin. More than enough for that, that paper bag. They're really controlling exactly how much I have right now, but that'll obviously very much change. And we see our first actual enemies around here. Yeah, be really careful, because it's very easy to lose your Pikmin really quickly. So, one way to kill these, um, s the small spotted bulbors really quickly is if you can land a Pikmin right on top of them, like this, it'll just kill it. There we go. And drag the corpse back. Corpses will give you Pikmin. And there's a gigantic red bulb orb right there. We're going to avoid it right now. I want to actually grab this treasure over here. I don't know how many I need. Hopefully he will not see us. He's fine. Now, um, the Pikmin... Oh, I need 35. Okay, that's fine. Then you are all going to go over here for now and start working our way up this wall. Come here. Okay, let's switch over to Louie right quick. Get some Pikmin right here. And five here. So I don't have enough yet, but I will in a second. Yeah, okay. Like I said, I'm not very good at maintaining two captains with like a team of Pikmin each, so bear with me. I probably go through this game a little bit slower than most people do, especially people who've played it a lot. Um, I play it very cat. I, I play all Pikmin games very casually. I'm not like all about, oh, I got to save this much on, on this day and do 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 Like, I don't care how long I take. You do not have a limit on your days in this one, like I said. You, it's, it's, it's 30 days in the first game. This, you can go up to 100. Or you can go higher than that. It doesn't matter. So... You, we'll, we're very much close to seeing exactly why uh, it does not matter uh, how many days or what the day timer is or anything like that. So let's grab our Pikmin here. What's fun though is if you do have both Louis and Olimar uh, picking up Pikmin like this, they'll both actually start doing it, so you go twice as fast. All right, let's go, let's go, guys. The Pikmin do, do start out pretty slowly, and you have a way to actually move quicker later on. Nice, that busted down the wall in a good timing. That's good. Uh, how could Pikmin destroy such a massive wall? When massed, their might is ferocious. Louis, did Olimar instruct you on proper pro- yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know. 
I can group them, I can move them, I can disband them, I can hold L and direct them. Thank you for explaining the controls to us. Uh, but yeah, so um, right now they're fairly slow. Um, I'm not super fast either, but they're pretty slow. That's because they have little um, leaves on their head, and there are three stages to each Pikmin. There's a bud, which is stage two, and a flower, which is stage three. All right, now that we have 47 Pikmin, we're just gonna go right here before this guy wakes up and just smack him a bunch of times. Like this, he should die very soon before he gets any of our Pikmin. There we go. And what I'm gonna do is grab... I'm gonna need 35, okay. Actually, I'm just gonna swap a little bit. Should be good. No? Hurry up. Perfect, okay, cool. Let's grab five for this. Or, oh no, I had it, damn it. What do I need for the, the big body? Ten. Okay, well, I can't do both. Um, you guys can do that, I guess. It's always frustrating. It's like, I'll have to come back later. All right. Well, while that's happening, let's leave um, Olimar here, and Louis will explore a little bit. Yeah, there we go. This is what we wanted to see. So over here, you'll see some water. Pikmin cannot survive water. You cannot bring them over here. So basically, we're at the end of the level, or as far as we'll go. But we see this little weird whole air geyser. It looks kind of weird. And this is the biggest change to Pikmin 2. Interesting. Warm air is welling up from the hole in the ground before you. What could lie underground? What is wrong? You both show expressions of unease. I mean, all of us aren't with me, but do not fear. The leader's group of Pikmin will join you. I shall dispatch my research pod too. I will return any Pikmin outside of that group to the onion. Approach the hole and press A to jump in. So we don't want to do that because I don't have any Pikmin with me right now. So let's um, go and catch up these guys. I could probably just leave. I don't really need to bring the, the big Bull Bear or whatever his name is um, to get more Pikmin. But I do want this uh, this can right now. So come on, hurry it up. Because I need all the treasures. All the treasures. Do, do, do. A lot of waiting around, unfortunately, sometimes just because of this type of thing. And our second treasure. And treasures, I like how they're all like worth very different things. There's some things that are worth like a couple hundred, some things are worth like ten. One hundred and seventy. Not bad. For a utter scrap. Oh, I guess it is. Just a crunched up pop can. Let's wait until we get our new guys here. We'll have a nice 52 for uh, our first little cave. And the caves are what really changes Pikmin compared to Pikmin 1. Um, Pikmin 1 had five areas, five overworld areas. They had um, a couple pieces to collect in each of those, and that was the game. In this, you have caves. And caves are basically, when you get down to it, dungeons. Uh, they can be pretty long, and some can be very randomized, uh, within a certain degree of randomization. Let's get Louie, let's get them all. Only the Pikmin you have in your current party, so what I have with me, so all 52 will come with me, and it's called the Emergence Cave, and I have zero treasures in it, there's a Pikmin entering, and those four uh, things at the top, we will explain another time. It just looks like a GameCube right now, doesn't it? I think that's actually on purpose, that that, that menu looks like a GameCube. Uh, but down we go. So the biggest, biggest thing about... Uh, that's just, so there's a bunch of biggest things about, about caves. Uh, one is that there are multiple levels, so this is sub-level one. Two, you can't create new Pikmin under normal circumstances. So if I kill enemies, which I'll have to do because there are a lot of enemies here, they don't make you new Pikmin because the onions aren't down here. So that's not a way to make Pikmin. So when you go in, I have 52. There's a good chance that I will have 52 and I leave if, as long as no one dies, so... Intriguing. My heart, uh, my heat sensors indicate that this hole's interior is warmer than on the surface. Analysis suggests danger lies ahead, but the promise of treasure is tantalizing. If you wish to check underground terrain, press plus button to communicate. I'm not just a ship, I am an all-purpose support pod. Yes. So, you do have a nice little map, though you can only see kind of where you've been. And the little holes there are kind of the exit to this, from this sublevel to the next sublevel. The next big thing is, there is no timer. So it doesn't matter how much time we had on um, the over above ground, um, it's the time is not ticking. So the idea of daytime and nighttime has no effect on anything uh, in the underground. So there you go. 
that's that's kind of the big thing. Now you can see that I can still actually bring a, a bring about my my little enemy corpses to the ship, uh, and that's because they are worth a little bit of money. Not a lot, like I mean one or two pokos each or something like that. Maybe some bigger enemies would be a little, little bit more, but grab you a big orange slice there. Two treasures looks like we have a bottle cap of what does that say? A spicy ginger ale. I think that was 7-Up in the original version of the game. We've the orange. Now, what's fun, though, is that um, even if I don't have Pikmin with me, as long as Olimar or Louis gets to the exit, you can bring all your Pikmin to the next area. So if you're like, I don't want to deal with this area, I'm really screwed, the enemies here are really difficult, or they're in a battle and you can't just get them away from what you're trying to do, um, you can just straight up um, leave this as long as you have a, a character here ready to go in this in the next hole so it, it's kind of fun that way but we're gonna be doing everything anyway so this hole appears to be quite deep my sensors indicate more treacherous terrain ahead louis you do recall that you can adjust the case yes, i know the friggin things now don't worry all your pikmin will follow you approach the hole and press a to enter yeah so it doesn't matter where they are doesn't matter if they're my current party all my pikmin will follow me down the hole so now we're eating that little snowy bulb orb uh, how can you possibly consider this beast a treasure? Beasts are incompatible with my circuitry. I suppose I will store your finds in my hold. But I do not think beasts will be worth much. It's weird that, like, if it's just in your in your hold, it's a shame you don't, like, belt them out when we're in the underground so I can use them to amass my army. But not a big deal. You can see we got, like, maybe a couple cents out of that, a couple pokos. And we got a big orange. Mmm, oranges. Citrus lump. Woo! Crest of the day. What's your favorite uh, fruit? I like pears. I haven't had one in a while, though. I do like oranges. Wouldn't want to eat a whole one by myself. I'd get sick of it by that, by that point. I'm just like, eh, give me a couple, a couple slices. I like pears a lot. I'm not a fruit guy. I love vegetables. I think I've said that like a million times on this channel. There we go. That was the first sub-level. Uh, the Emergence Cave does not have any randomness to it. Oh, I'm skipping the animations. I'm so used to skipping the animations. We'll, we'll watch them a couple times so you guys can see them, but I will be skipping these animations to make the caves go a little bit faster. Because down we go. Boop. It's just this animation, like, every time, so... I don't want to sit there and do it and watch it every single time. Final floor! That was fast. Also, uh, when you go and uh, into a new floor, it does automatically save. So, you can save scum a little bit, which you might want to do, because these caves can be really difficult. We haven't really talked about the difficulty of uh, Pikmin 2 yet. Uh, we won't for a little bit. Not yet, because uh, we're still in the very easy kind of portion of the game. Uh, and there's still a lot to be kind of learning. I won't even bother picking up the um, the corpses of my enemies because I don't care about Pokos. I'm getting every treasure anyways, which is more than enough uh, to to um, fulfill my debt. But if they're in the way, I'll pick them up. But anyways, we got oh a, a nice globe here. Oh, and it's important enough for the camera to actually showcase it. I live right there. <laughs> on on one of that area on that landmass, I'll let you decide where that is. It's inconceivable that such an immense object has been a buried here for so long. The design on the outer shell resembles the surface of the planet as seen from space. Obviously saying, hey, this is absolutely Earth. Perhaps this can be used for something other than salvage. But how will we ever lift it? I fear that even a hundred red Pikmin will be unable to lift it. That's crazy, because uh, we can't have more than a hundred Pikmin on, on uh, screen. But how many Pikmin do we need? A hundred and one? Well, I guess it's just stuck here forever. Keep going. We're, we're not meant to get that. Oh well, not a big deal. No, obviously there is something new with that. Like I said, Pikmin 2 has a lot of new things. Let's take these guys out. But to hold a Pikmin as I approach, it's really important to do that, especially if you're trying to get a specific um, color. In it, like right now, I only have red, but if you're like, you need uh, a blue Pikmin, Grab a blue Pikmin and then hold A to throw, and they'll reorganize themselves so that they'll be in that color, So because it knows you want to throw that color. I like that a lot. I didn't learn that until more than halfway through the game my first time playing, so um, it would be really useful to kind of know that. All right, over here we see these little blackish, purplish flowers, and these are going to be amazing. You're going to love seeing these things. Astounding! A flower blooms in a cave deep beneath the snowy landscape. Clearly, it is warmer down here than above. Look, the Pikmin are restless. They look as if they yearn to be tossed into the flower. And please do so. We know what the flowers did, the candy bud or candy pop flowers or whatever from Pikmin 1, uh, but we've never seen a black or purple one before. And that's because we are getting our first new color of Pikmin. These are purple Pikmin, and they are broken beyond belief. Let's say hello to our new Pikmin brethren. Isn't he cute? He's a little fatty. 
Little fatty with like four strands of hair, or like six strands of hair. Purple Pikmin, they're great. <laughs> Eyes crazily apart from each other. Amazing, a purple Pikmin. And his hair, and it is quite stocky. It is the George Costanza of Pikmin. It seems very heavy and strong. This kind of Pikmin was not mentioned in your report, Olimar. It must be an entirely new type. Transforming Pikmin by, uh, by tossing them into the flowers? Intriguing. Perhaps there are others. And there are. Red, blue, and yellow Pikmin can be gotten with the onions you'll find later in the game, just like in Pikmin 1. Purple and the other Pikmin are only found underground when you find these flowers. So I can't just amass a bunch of purple Pikmin whenever I want. I need to find those flowers. Uh, and one of the treasures in the end of the game will require 100 purple Pikmin. Why do I need 100 purple Pikmin? Or why would it matter to pick up a specific thing that I need purple Pikmin? And that is because, I'm just gonna grab one, Purple Pikmin are specifically very, very strong. And where the hell is that globe? There you are. One Purple Pikmin has the strength of 10 regular Pikmin. And that is how we can lift things that are above the 100 Pikmin threshold. Because right now, with the Pikmin that I have right now, I basically have the strength of... How many? 142 Pikmin. <laughs> so there you go. Purple Pikmin are amazing in combat. Uh, when you throw one, actually, I'm going to steal one from here. When you throw one in combat, they smash down like that, shaking the ground. Now, they won't latch on like other Pikmin to do damage constantly. They will, however, stun the enemy and do damage by falling on them. So, okay, let's get these out of the way, I guess. Jeez. So, they are the best in combat. Just, they are so good. Um, and you can take out a lot of enemies, including bosses, really easily with, with purple Pikmin. That being said, like I said, you can't amass them like crazy unless you go out of your way to find purple uh, flowers. So it can be hard to get a lot of purple Pikmin, and if they die, you can screw yourself over in a boss battle pretty easily if you don't have anything good with you. Um, but yeah, they're, they're really interesting, but they are slow. They carry things extremely slowly, so while they're good to lift things that require a lot of power, you're taking a long time to get anywhere with them. Anyway, Spherical Atlas. There is a device resembling a microchip embedded inside the sphere, retrieving data. Error, I could only decode a portion of the data, but I did retrieve new geographic charts. I will input this data into my planetary database and name it the sphere chart. Uh, press blah, 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 blah. Now that we have this new data, we sh you should explore the decoded territory tomorrow. And uh, basically what this means is that we uh, have uh, a new area we can go to. So what I like about this game is that a lot of the things you can get aren't just treasures, but they'll actually be almost pieces of equipment or upgrades um, that you can get for your ship or for uh, Olimar and Louie. It's pretty neat. So yeah, uh, that is it for this floor. So we can leave now. And you can tell you can leave because instead of having a, just a regular hole, it's straight up a geyser. So go to the geyser. And we can get out of here. You can also see that the purple pigment are having trouble following me because they're so damn slow. Astounding! Water is shooting out of this geyser with incredible force. Sensors indicate that it has enough power to launch you into the air. Approach it and press A to try. Okay. Up we go. Come on. Let me out. So even though I lost my 10 purple pigment, they're over here kind of wandering around because I was going too fast. It doesn't matter. They will still come with me if I go up here. Escape to the surface of the pigment? Yes! See, they're there with me. So do not worry about losing Pikmin by going to the next floor or leaving the cave. They will come with you. And then you get a little little uh, report kind of here, which I really like. So cave complete means I've found every treasure inside that cave, so I don't have to worry about it, about going back. Get a little marker there. But it's nice to know that there are purple flowers in there uh, to get. They're not always there. Sometimes... Um, certain things need to have happened, like a certain amount of Pikmin or whatever, but they're always there the first time. I'll never pose. There we go. And we will always uh, appear right in front of our ship. Now, we are basically at 20 minutes for the day, um, so we won't go to the next level this episode, but we do have time to just explore uh, this area. My episodes aren't always going to be 20 minutes uh, because of the timing required of, of, of this game. Um... And I'm willing to go up to like 25 minutes or whatever for an episode, depending. So we might as well explore a little bit and see what we can get. You've successfully returned to the planet's surface. Excellent decision-making, gentlemen. We must celebrate your first successful spelunking expedition. You've gathered a large amount of data that needs in-depth now. Oh, am I forced to end the, the day? Because that's dumb. I shall, I shall send a report back to the president tonight detailing your progress. Are we done for the day? Are we forcing the end of the day? 
Olimar and Louis, since you will explore a new area tomorrow, today's work is done. Okay, I guess the game is telling me we're done this episode. What? You still want to work? Unacceptable. You may not realize it, but you are exhausted. You should take a much needed rest as you have all the time you need to collect treasure. I love others saying that. There is not a time limit to this game. So take your time and do what you want to do. You do not have a 30 day time limit. So it's making sure you know that. Haste makes waste, so take it slow and steady. Yeah, I guess the game will just, yeah, end the day. All right, well, we have 10 purple Pikmin. That will very much help me. Now, that was a very short cave of only two sub-levels, but I'm pretty sure there's caves with like 12 to 15 sub-levels, and they're huge. And that's where the length of this game comes from. Uh, there are a lot of caves. There are, I believe, three caves in this area, and most areas have four uh, caves, and they can be pretty crazy. So... We actually won't be returning to uh, the Cave of Repose for a little while because we don't have a way to get past the water. So we're going to leave it be. And actually, when you can go back, the two leftover caves are two of the hardest caves in the game. So we're not going to return here for a little while. So we're at 940 out of 10,000 Pokos needed. We got a pretty decent amount of uh, new Pikmin. Plus, you press ZL, shoulder button. You can see how many have died and to what they died from. I love that. Uh, be prepared for a lot of Pikmin deaths. Uh, when we beat the game, it'll actually compare to my other save. So we'll actually see how much better I do on this, my only second time playing this game. So, Baby steps first, Olimar. Plan well, and don't worry about me. Our debt is with happy Hokitate savings and loan, after all. Besides, there's, not, uh, there's nothing left to repossess. So, ha! <laughs> kind of love the president. He's pretty funny. Love his little mustache, his little five-strand mustache. There we go! With that, we have found... The next area zooms out a little bit. The Awakening Wood, which I think represents uh, spring. So how uh, the Valley of Repose was uh, winter, the Awakening Wood is spring, the next area is summer. Uh, it could be the other way around, but and um, the third one will be the autumn. But you can see here, you see the question marks, the Emergence, emergence Cave, three out of three. There's two other caves. Like I said, they're like late game. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter because once you get Pikmin, you uh, like all the Pikmin, you can go anywhere. But I would like to go in there kind of knowing what I'm doing and having a nice big army. So we won't return to the Valley of Repose for a while. Uh, but next episode, we will go to the Awakening Wood that has four dungeons, four caves. We'll be doing probably at least one. But with that, guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Phil the Blanks. See you next level. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this episode, click that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to know when the next episode is up. If you want to support my channel, share some videos with some friends and consider supporting me on Patreon.